All right, let's talk about the top five defenses the Detroit Lions will face on their 2020 schedule. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Share the video as Mercy Sports Talk in the building. Best way to donate is to share the video. Don't forget you always can reach me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and that order. Those links in the description. So let's talk about the five defenses that Detroit Lions will play this season. Um, number five for me is the Indianapolis Colts. I love Darius Leonard. Heard he went through at Chipotle. Um, hopefully he get that situation corrected. But I like what they're doing over there. Um, you know, you thought that defense was supposed to be everything. Uh, they last coach they had that's supposed to be a defensive coach and kept drafting offensive players. Um, they're playing better in the back end. With, uh, they got the kid from uh, Ohio State back there. What is his name? Um, Malik Hooker or something. Um, Darius Leonard. They're better at stopping the run up front. Just basically, can their offense get them enough uh, consistent firepower? You know, Marlon Mack is a beast running the ball. I like Jacoby Brissett over Phillip Rivers at this point in Phillip Rivers' career. And I like Phillip Rivers. I'm a huge Phillip Rivers fan. You know, he's fiery. He just, he would have went to New York. He probably would have had two or three championships. You know, Eli cried his way out of New York. But, yeah, I like, I, that's an underrated defense in Indianapolis. It's an underrated team. You know what I'm saying? Their defense has been getting better and better. More stout, the back end playing good, the front end they playing well. So I like what they're doing. I want to see the progression this year take one more step. Now, number four for me is probably going to be the Minnesota Vikings. We played them twice this year, so um, they kind of lost a little bit. I mean, Xavier Rose is now in the Indianapolis Colts. I forgot that even happened if, that, if the depth chart was correct. So, you know, Rhodes is on the Colts. They lost Rhodes. I believe they brought Troy Waynes back. They still got Harrison Smith. They lost Everson Griffin for right now, Daniel Hunter. So they still they still got some good players over there. Mike Zimmer does a good job with the defense, especially the back end. And just Minnesota knows well. You know what I'm saying? Um, last year, Stafford put a uh, put a block party up on them. And Kirk Cousins put a block party on our defense, and they end up winning the shootout. Their defense stepped up a little bit more. But historically, we have struggled versus Minnesota defenses since Zimmerman was here. I mean, or, or Mike Zimmer, excuse me, was here. And, um, you know, they just know us well. You know, they got, you know, Eric Kendrick's one of the best middle linebackers in the game. One of my favorite players to watch, especially at that position. People get a lot of fanfare to uh, Bobby Wagner and, and other guys uh, in the league. But Eric Kendricks is probably right there under Bobby Wagner as one of the better middle linebackers in the league. They still got Anthony Barr. You know, we'll see how a lot of the younger guys step up for them. Um, a lot of the corners, they drafted a corner last year, last couple of years. So it's going to be some dudes stepping up. And I can't, you know, I can't wait till we play the Vikings. So. To me, they'd be the fourth best defense we play. You can make a case if some of them dudes, you know, if Everson Griffin come back and some of them dudes step up at corner and do better than Xavier Rose did last year, which ain't hard to do. Um, they could be probably the best defense we play. So they got that type of potential depending on, you know, who going to step up for Griffin, who going to step up for Rhodes. And, you know, at the end of the day, some of the other, you know, players that go around, Daniel Kendricks and Harrison Smith, to see where they go. And also, you know, Dalvin Cook is going to be important to their defense too because the way he's able to move the chains. And if he don't come in, then, you know, Madison going to have to be good and Kirk Cousins got to be good. If offense don't step up, that defense going to suffer. And that's any National Football League team. You can't just be really good on defense and not have nothing on offense and be really good on offense and not have nothing on defense. The special teams can't be sorry at all either. Uh, you know, let's go up to number three because I ain't going to be long. Number three, uh, personally for me, it was the New Orleans Saints. Um, like what they're doing up front. Marshawn Lattimore, one of the best corners in the league. You know, they back end is pretty good up front. Cameron Jordan and those boys is pretty good. So, you know, kind of they kind of be iffy sometimes. But last year they played, they had a really complete team. The only issue with them is that Drew Brees just can't throw the ball down the field no more. So that's how Minnesota was able to beat them last year. And Drew Brees just, you know, he be choking in the playoffs sometimes. So I like what uh, New Orleans doing on defense. They're doing good at stopping the run, getting after the passer. Hopefully, you know, the dude out of UTEP step up, Marcus Lattimore, Davenport, and he do what he needs to do. But overall... Janoris Jenkins over there, um, you know, linebacker kind of kind of sketchy for them, but in that system it worked. Um, the guy I wanted the Lions to draft, Cha uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson is over there. He gonna be a stud at safety for them. So yeah, New, or New Orleans is gonna be a problem. But the good thing about you know every every one of these defenses we talked about, the great thing about it is we get to play them at home. We got Indianapolis at home, okay? We got New Orleans at home. We got at least Minnesota once at home. So all the defenses we, we didn't name so far, we're going to at least have a crack at them at the crib. But, um, yeah, I love what, uh, what what New Orleans done defensively-wise and, you know, in the trenches in, in general. They understand that they have to dominate both sides of the defensive lines, offensive line, and they doing it, you know. 
They got rid of Larry Warford, but they drafted another interior guy. They understand they got to keep the pocket clean for Drew Brees, but Achilles Hill for that team is going to be Drew Brees. He just no longer got the arm that he used to have. And when people once people kind of chime in on that, going into later in the season, his arm going to go out and out, go go out more and more. You'll be able to know that he can't go over the top no more and go down the field. So unless he can do something to improve his arm strength, I really wouldn't fear Drew Brees going down the field this year. But I fear Cameron Jordan and and you know Marshawn Lattimore out there. They defense played very, very well. If it doesn't mistake me, last time we played them, we played them in New Orleans. They blew us out in the beginning. We made a big, big comeback, comeback in the second half of that game, and we came up a little bit short. So we get them at the crib. It's at some point we was playing New Orleans so much, we always playing them at the Superdome, and they finally come into the D. So, you know, it's kind of like us playing Arizona. Like We feel like we play Arizona every year in their divisional opponent. So um, my second team is going to be the Tennessee Titans. Defensively, they did get rid of Jarrell Casey, I believe, but defensively, they coming. You know, they got that uh, Ben Yard guy in the back end, a Dory Jackson. We seen what they do last year. They can stop the run, get after the passer, you know what I'm saying? And they kind of had Kansas City, you know, down for a minute, and they let Kansas City do what it, everybody let them do, do to them. And that's come back and put the smackers down on people's Rudy Pooh. But I like I like Tennessee. It's another team that understand that they have to dominate both sides of the uh, of lines of scrimmage. Offensive line is pretty dominant. Defensive line is dominant. Their front seven is dominant, and now they back end is coming to fruition. I don't. I think they let Logan Ryan go, so I'm not sure that they're gonna do. You know, if he played nickel or the other side of Dory Jackson, but you know, Mike Vrabel, he know how to coach. You know, what I'm saying another Bill Belichick disciple. You know that we could have had that we didn't have. So I don't know what was that, but yeah, Tennessee is gonna be a tough, probably the toughest defense we gonna have to play this year almost because we gotta play them on the road and going to Nashville is tough. You know, it's raining down. It might rain down there. Or they just tough. They're going to stop the run, get after the passer. And now Tennessee is playing good back end defense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the last time I remember we went to Tennessee, I could be wrong. Matthew Stafford got knocked out the game. Sean Hill came in. Brandon Pettigrew got the ball snatched out of his hand, and, and they ran another way. So, I mean, that's the last time I remember we went to Tennessee or Cashville, a.k.a. Nashville. It's that game where Stafford got knocked out. So Tennessee is a team on the uprise. But the good thing about playing Tennessee is they make it a transition. And like CJ, what's the transition you talking about? They going from being the hunted to the hunter. And a lot of these young teams that go to being a the hunter, they don't react well to being a the hunter. They they good sneaking up on people. Remember Jacksonville? They had that dog ass defense and they had that makeshift quarterback. Tennessee got the same thing going on. The only difference is Derrick Henry. I believe he's going to be more consistent because he ain't got his money yet than Leonard Fournette was. And uh, so basically, Blaine, not Blaine Gabbard, but uh, Blake Boyles is Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, but hopefully Ryan, Ryan Tannehill ain't a one-hit wonder for them because maybe Miami just didn't have a good team around him and a bad organization can make a solid or a good talent look bad. People forget Ryan Tannehill was a receiver at Texas a and and converted to a quarterback. You don't see that every day, but Tennessee is the second-best defense we've played. Right, that's the probably the hardest defense outside of our nine division road games we gonna see. Number one is Chicago. They know us well, they got talent all over the field. They added Robert Quinn, Khalil Mack ain't going nowhere. Kyle was the little the little corner they got on the outside, I forget his name. Kyle Fuller, you know what I'm saying, Eddie Jackson, they got Gibson in the back end. You know, they know us well, they play good defense, they can stop the run, get after the passer. Um they wasn't in stout last year because the quarterback position was inconsistent. And that's the one position that can mess with the whole team. So I like I like Chicago defense. I like Chicago roster. They just don't have a quarterback. If Nick Foles can stay healthy and, and, and manage the game, Chicago could be in the running to go to the Super Bowl. Any of these teams in the NFC, it's wide open. There's no dominant team. People say New Orleans, their quarterback can't throw over 20 yards. They owe. People say Tampa, they owe. So with Chicago defense, they can get after the passer. They can stop the run most years. They back end is pretty good. They got rid of Prince of Mukamara. Um, you know what I'm saying? One of them dudes, Henry uh, uh, Floyd or, or Roquan Smith left. Um, but they still got the other one. I think they still got Danny Trevathan. So they still they still, they still, still got the dope, the dope defense. But you know what? It is an advantage when we play Chicago, Minnesota, Green Bay. That just as they know our offense, we know their defense. And Matthew Stafford has seen it all in my Jeezy voice. In the NFL, but Chicago was the number one defense we'll play. So 
I got Chicago number one, Tennessee number two. Um, I think I said uh, I said Saints number three, Minnesota number four, and number five, Indianapolis Coast. But also you got Jacksonville. They lost so much talent. Atlanta, Tampa Bay could be better. They was good at stopping the run with Indomitian Kasu. Um, Arizona, they'd probably be improved on both sides of the ball uh, this year. But those are five, I think. Let me know if you guys differ. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Appreciate the love, support. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Just share the video for your boy, but cash out, PayPal, description. One time for the one time. It's your boy, CJ Goodfellow. We gone.